Do you or someone you know suffer with really bad period pains or generalized pelvic pain? Do you just think that that's just how it is for you when you're just unlucky? Maybe there's something else going on. Maybe you've even already been to the doctors and discussed it, but you're still not sure. Well, could it be something called endometriosis? You might already know you have endometriosis, or maybe you've never heard of it. And you wouldn't be alone because up to 80% of people in the UK have never heard of it. And yet it affects 10% of women in this country. I'm starting to think it's a bit like the menopause, which until very recently was something that a lot of women were just struggling with in quiet and weren't able to talk about. And I'd like to think that endometriosis is something we all need to learn a bit more about and be able to talk about and manage. Because for those women who are suffering with it, it's really awful, really affects quality of life. So let's find out what endometriosis is, what we can do to manage it, and what could be helpful for the future for you. So it is common, in fact it affects 190 million women worldwide. So what is it? Well, when you have a period, the inside lining of your womb has cells which swell and then bleed, and that bleeding comes out of your vagina as a period. Well, in endometriosis, this endometrial-like tissue, which is, the, is the, within the womb, ends up elsewhere, around your fallopian tubes, in your ovaries, even around the bladder and the bowel. This then expands when just before your period and then bleeds. But the, unlike down the vagina, there's nowhere for this blood to go. So it just swells, causing a lot of pain and discomfort. Over time, this can even then cause sticky areas, little adhesions, causing areas to stick together um, and can cause more problems in the future. Unfortunately, there isn't a cure, but there are lots of things we can do to manage the symptoms and reduce the risk of complications and make your quality of life much better. So perhaps you suffer with really, really bad period pain. It seems to be much worse than friends you've got. Perhaps you're having deep pain during sex or after sex. Perhaps you're struggling with infertility. Perhaps you are got pain when you're opening your bowels or, or when you're having a wee, you might even be passing some blood when you're having a wee. These are all possible symptoms of endometriosis. And it, because they're quite vague, often it's put down to irritable bowel syndrome, it could be IBS, or it's just normal period pain, just shut up and put up. Um, so actually, it usually takes on average eight years to be diagnosed. So that's a really long time, isn't it? And because it's difficult for doctors and nurses to, to diagnose it, because it can be so vague, often women haven't even realised that, for example, their bowel problems or their urine problems are cyclical with their period. So one thing I think is really good is to start a diary of your symptoms and to see if the problems you're struggling with are in time with your periods. Complications of endometriosis, which are often worse if it's been left undiagnosed and the symptoms have gone on a long time, include like depression and anxiety. This is really gonna impact people's quality of life. You might have been suffering with that yourself already. It can really negatively impact people's sex life. They can have time off work. In fact, the healthcare costs and the absenteeism caused by endometriosis alone cost the UK economy 8.2 billion pounds. The adhesions, these sticky bits, can cause these bladder and bowel problems, which I've just mentioned already. So it can be painful to open your bowels, it can be painful to have a wee, sometimes there's blood in the wee. They can cause ovarian cysts, and unfortunately can also cause infertility. Okay, so now you're thinking, yeah, that sounds like me. I've got lots of those symptoms. How do I find out if it is endometriosis? Well, call up your doctors and go and speak to them. Um, first things, they'll probably want to examine you, but that may be normal. Uh, they may then refer you on for what's called a transvaginal ultrasound. So this is an ultrasound um, with, a, with a probe that goes inside the vagina so they get a better view of the pelvis. Again, this can still be normal in endometriosis. At which point then, if that's all normal, but we're still thinking it might be endometriosis, then we start a trial of treatment. But you can even start this yourself without even calling up your doctor's surgery. Um, so this would be a recommendation of a three-month trial of just pain and anti-inflammatory, so paracetamols and um, ibuprofen, and write that diary, which I mentioned already. And the other option is to start a hormonal treatment. So these would be the contraceptive options like you would normally have if you were trying to avoid being pregnant. Um, I've got a video all about contraceptive options, so have a look at that if you're interested. But things that would help for endometriosis would be the mini pill, the combined pill, um, the Mirena coil, the implant. These are all good options because they're going to reduce the estrogen levels, which is going to reduce um, the problems with endometriosis. If that's not helping, or if there's any abnormalities on the, the um, ultrasound, then likelihood you will be referred to gynecology. 
The ultimate diagnostic test then is this laparoscopy, this keyhole test, so they can see the endometrial tissue when they have a look, but that has to be done under general anaesthesia. So some women are quite happy to go ahead with a kind of working diagnosis of endometriosis um, and go ahead and be treated for it that way. There are other treatments that um, gynecology may suggest to you, but ultimately they're the kind of the key ones, the hormonal treatments or surgery. And obviously you may need some IVF if you're struggling with infertility. Last ditch chance option is to have a hysterectomy. Some women do have this uh, to try and help their endometriosis. It doesn't cure it though. You can still struggle because those little patches of endometrial tissue that have gone elsewhere may still cause trouble. And just remember, if you do have a hysterectomy with endometriosis and then go on to have HRT, then you still need the form of HRT that includes both progesterone and estrogen to protect that bits of endometrial tissue. Um, other options just include managing it as per chronic pain. I've done a video all about chronic pain, so have a look at that. But this can include things like CBT to come up with coping strategies for the pain. It can include physical therapy. Um, those things can all help with exercise, um, pacing, issues like that. I would also really, really recommend Endometriosis UK. They've got excellent support groups. They've got web chat. They've got a helpline. They've got local community groups. So you might be thinking, God, I'm the only person I know who's got endometriosis or this is really awful. But, but find other people um, who, are, who have struggled like you and probably found solutions. So I think it sounds awful, doesn't it? It sounds like this is a terrible thing. But actually, I think the key thing is we need to be better at diagnosing it. Eight years is too long, isn't it, for a lot of women to be struggling with this pain. And to admit that this is an awful, painful problem that we need to be talking about and managing much better than we probably are in a lot of cases. So share this video with anyone you are think struggling with pelvic pain or really bad period pain, just so they may consider this as a possibility and get treatment early. I hope you found that helpful. Have a look at lots of my other videos. Do subscribe, like and share. Thanks so much. See you again soon.